The whole Jamaat is bonded to Khilafat. When Khalifa al Masih appeals to the people, they open their hearts and it is overwhelming sometimes to see people who have very little, how generous they are. When you have a complex of this size, the facilities that we were able to offer, no one else can offer. Allah has granted the vision that he had and Allah has uh, given us this beautiful building. This is a story of the unyielding strength of unity and the awe-inspiring power of faith. At this time, I the his vision was clear and his determination unwavering. Beth al means House of Victories, and its name fits well. For over two decades, this mosque has stood as a symbol of hope, community and faith. Beth al is more than just a place of worship. It is a hub of community activity with a range of services and facilities that benefit people of all ages and backgrounds. From educational programs to sporting events, from charity initiatives to social gatherings, Beth al is a place where people can come together and make a difference. It's a great blessing that you've got such a huge complex. When you have a complex of this size, the facilities that we were able to offer, no one else can offer. These premises became a centre where all the larger community was able to use it as well. Certainly no other mosque opens to the public the sort of facilities we open to the public. The history of Beth al is a rich and fascinating one. It began in the 1990s when the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in the UK began to outgrow its existing mosque in Southfields. As Khalifa al Masih IV, may Allah have mercy on him, the spiritual leader of the community at the time saw the need for a bigger and more modern mosque. The journey begins for Beth al on a piece of paper because when we were looking for a site for this uh, new center for the UK, the headquarters for the Amdi Jamaat, Khalifa Rabi Ramanatala said the briefing was to find somewhere very large, very spacious, with lots of potential for growth. Hazur's vision was to build the largest mosque, certainly in the UK and preferably in Europe, on this site. No Amdis were living in this area at the time. A lot of opposition and a lot of newspaper articles started coming out that these are proposing to build a very large mosque here and we should oppose it. Ultimately, it was bought. Khalifa Rabi Ramu first visit here in 1996 was to come and view the site after we'd done some of the clearance. And the place was cleared so that Hazu could come and visit at least a presentable site. So uh, Hazu came and he immediately fell in love with the site. I remember Hazu walking around here and coming through what was the entrance here at the front of the old loading bay. And the third visit was when he came for the foundation stone ceremony on the 19th of October, 1999. And Hazul laid the foundation stone uh, along with 10 other people. It was a vision that would take years to come to completion. Sadly, Hazrat Khalif al Masih IV, may Allah have mercy on him, passed away in April 2003 before he could see his dream become a reality. When people ask me about 2003, I have mixed emotions like everybody else. We were all getting ready because we knew that we would be able to give this gift to the Khalifa Masih Rabi Ramallah of a beautiful mosque and we were all very excited at that stage. I was so excited. I've been here on site since 1995 and very much looking forward to Hazul coming here inaugurating the mosque. And we were almost there. In April, I was visiting Hazul regularly with mulakats to discuss even the ayats, what were going to be written on the, on, in the mosque walls and the colours of the carpet. Now we were into the finishes and Hazul was approving those himself, the colours of the carpets and everything. So there was no doubt in my mind that we were getting close to that moment where Hazul was going to come here and inaugurate the masjid. 
but as you all know, uh, Allah has his own plan and tragically has all passed away. With the mantle of caliphate now on the shoulders of Hazrat Khalif al Masih V, may Allah strengthen his hands, all projects of the community continued seamlessly. Bethel Fatul was one of them. And when Sifa Khamis, and attended the site, it gave us another impetus to start again. So the early May, Hazu came here to visit the Battle Fatul. Hazu gave us some guidance as well. So suddenly we felt we had the uh, hand over us again, you know. Khilafat ke bina apna Nahi kuch bhi guzara hai Yehi zulmat behro bar Mein ik apna Very speedily the work started to come together for completion. Bethel Fatur was ready to be inaugurated in October 2003. It was a momentous occasion for the Ahmadiyya Muslim community UK. We were blessed with Khalifa Khamis uh, Mr. Aziz coming to Bethel Fatur and inaugurating on the 3rd of October. Wonderful to see everybody together here in a massive attendance. And there was joy that a project had been completed. Beth of Fatul has become more than just a mosque. It is a symbol of hope, of unity, and of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community's unwavering commitment to serving humanity. For many, it's a second home, a place of solace, of worship, and of community. In 2015, a devastating fire broke out in Bethel Fatul. As news of the fire spread, members of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community rushed to the mosque, hoping and praying that the damage would not be too severe. But as they arrived, they were met with scenes of chaos. That fire, oh, horrible day, horrible day. Uh, I remember as soon as I found I came here, uh, the fire brigade services arrived at the same time. Firefighters battled the flames, while members of the community helplessly stood by, watching as the building they had poured their hearts and souls into was being consumed by fire. Allah's will was that it was going to take control. It was tragic for me to see. You can imagine, um, up until that moment, we had spent every ounce of our energy trying to get this old factory to become our headquarters. As the smoke cleared, the extent of the damage became clear. The administrative section of the mosque had been completely destroyed. Papers, files and records had been reduced to ashes, and the offices that once had housed the staff of Bethel Fatul lay in ruins. The old building, which was very robust, became a mangled building with steel melted. It was so hot. I'm heartbroken seeing it all the twisted metal and in, in, in pieces and every effort that people have put in over the years. A lot, lot of Akari Amal, you know, every, as I mentioned then, every skirting, every door, every had a story, you know, because each square inch of that building was renovated over many years with lots of effort and love and painstakingly done. I had a meeting with Hazur in the next couple of days and he expressed his sadness. But again, he said it, Allah's will, and you know, Allah will give us some, something even more beautiful. As we addressed us in the khutbah immediately after the fire, and he said that, uh, you know, people are mocking us, our enemies are mocking us. And one of the Muslims said, that they are making 
اور سبحان اللہ پڑھ رہے ہیں ٹھیک ہے آج یہ سبحان اللہ استدا کے رنگ میں اور اللہ تعالیٰ کی غیرت بھڑکانے کے لیے پڑھ رہے ہیں تو پڑھیں لیکن ان شاء اللہ جلد ہی اس سے بہتر اور خوبصورت تعمیر کر کے ہم حقیقی سبحان اللہ پڑھیں گے اور ماشاء اللہ ہی پڑھیں گے خدا واحد کے نام پر ٹکے اب اس میں مسجد بنائیں گے ہم بنائیں گے ہم وی ہیو میڈ حضور ورڈ پارٹ آف دا ڈیزائن سو آن دا بلڈنگ ماشاء اللہ ان سبحان اللہ از انسکرائبڈ آن دا مین فساڈ اینڈ دیز ورڈ ول ریمین فار ایور without any doubt anybody who's seen this building now it comes from within them those two words by the grace of Allah uh, because of the fire the entire building was set ablaze and we had to demolish the building all the way down to the ground and start afresh from a clean slate and that gave us an opportunity to make something new something big the reconstruction of Bethel Thur was a monumental undertaking Azur's vision was not only to rebuild but to make the mosque even more beautiful than before. So we requested Hazur Anwar to come and lay the, the foundation. So Alhamdulillah, Hazur came and laid the foundation stone. And as is traditional, then a number of other people also are requested as an honorable thing. Throughout the construction process, Hazur Khalif al V took a keen interest in the project providing guidance and support to ensure the building was constructed to the highest of standards. We send a, a report to Huzur Anwar every month with a picture that what we are doing and what, what are the challenges are, and then with the, his prayers and uh, blessings from God Almighty, we overcome. There are, as you know, there are many challenges, especially this sort of project. We went through the COVID, pe- COVID period in this building we were basically right middle of the project but this is a blessings because it's a, it's a god almighty always there and prayers of huzur and were so through misa we are sending reports and requests for prayer and personally writing letters to huzur and were and so we are very fortunate that huzur and were is there to pray for us and we overcome on the hurdles and issues and to be honest with you huzur loves this building right Uh, every time I have been to see Hazur, uh, he looks, I, I take all the most pictures and you can see the pride and glow on his face. The new five-story administrative building of Bethel Thur is a modern marvel, covering a staggering 5,800 square meters of space. This modern marvel boasts an additional 25% more space than the previous building. accommodating the growing needs of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community UK. The top two floors have been thoughtfully designed for guest accommodation, while the first and second floors offer ample office provisions. The Nasser Hall with a double height design has paved the way for the addition of two mezzanine wings on either side. The Nasser Hall and Noor Hall are just over 660 square meters with approximately 450 table guest capacity each. Designed with large windows, the building is filled with natural light, creating a warm and inviting atmosphere for those who work and visit. The, the, this is Hazur's vision, right? So basically you see this big arch. This was Hazur's vision. I mean, previously the architect had done the smaller arches but then hazur said that you know in order to bring everything together and you can see that actually is the thing that creates the beauty of this this whole whole building this bigger arch uh, with the lighting behind it was hazur's vision about how this is it should take place so these are proper ramps to use and then if you look here This was again Hazur's vision that there should be a corridor that should go all the way to the mosque, right? So this is, you can see the beauty of, of that in itself. 
is very stunning. And you can see different views. For instance, if you look standing here, you see that through, through there, and you see the beauty of the building there. If you stand in the colonnade, you will see, of course at the moment they're, <clears throat> they're cleaning up, but when you stand in the colonnade, you will see that there's beautiful, huge colonnade where people will be able to walk through leisurely when, when, when they come to this, to this building. The stone that's gone onto this building is a very special stone that was bought from Portugal. So this stone that you see, which is part of the beauty of the building, is a very special stone that comes from a particular part of Portugal. And of course the texture and the beauty, and it's very thick, you can see the thickness of the stone there. So we had to construct a special structural support system to allow to carry the stone because it's so heavy. Especially the actual design of the building, it's, uh, it's a lot of involvement by Huzur Anwar. The architect's initial design did not include the dome and the minarets on the building. So Huzur Anwar himself drew dome and minaret on both sides. Which added to the beauty of the building. And you can see how deeply involved uh, Huzur Anwar in this project. And so throughout the project, Hazur visited several times. We had done the first bit of the structure was in. He came because this was a column-free structure on the ground floor. Therefore, we had to do some creative structural innovation to, to, to be able to hold the building together. You can see that this is all open plan. There are no pillars in here. So this is all held up by the trusses that span in the middle of so they hold the building up, right? So Hazur then guided us that we should get things reviewed. Hazur's inquiry about the behaviour of the structure was a critical component of understanding its mechanics. His question regarding the truss and whether it could handle the load prompted a more in-depth analysis of its capabilities. As per Hazur's guidance, we carried out an independent structural assessment to ensure that the, the building is structurally sound for the benefit of the Jamaat. We took a description of that truss in, uh, later on in the Mulakat as well, and then we further explained to Hazur how, how the structure actually works. Uh, one new thing that's been added to Nasser Hall is this video wall for the events. Every Jamaat event that uh, we used to do previously, we used to have to print banners, but this new video wall will, uh, inshallah, give us the opportunity to actually change the, the setting or the theme of the event in, in, in relation to whatever event that's going on uh, and we will not have to print uh, banners every time. Hazur actually guided us that we should move away from underfloor heating. Then the, um, the mechanical and electrical consultants that we had on the project, they designed this uh, radiant panel design. So you can see in the hall the, the, we have these radiant panels and these radiant panels uh, obviously transfer heat from above as opposed to through the underfloor heating. And then when Hazul came, he would give us guidance about uh, the layouts. In fact, on this floor, uh, the residential areas, Hazul guided us how we should have uh, rooms where people can go and have refreshments and things like that. Dining hall, middle me, Hazul, just say, I think Hazur was always uh, extremely reflective and he was here, you know, he was looking at things. There are lovely, lots of lovely, lovely moments. And I remember when Hazur came once with Nazri Ala and Kili Ala Sahib, and Hazur said to them, What do you think? Isn't that beautiful? and he was very, very pleased with seeing such a beautiful building. Alhamdulillah, we now have a much better facility than we had before. Of course, Allah listens to the prayers of uh, Khalifa and uh, has given us something very beautiful.
सार दे को ताजा खुदा ने चा तो कोई दिन जफर के पर चम उड़ाएंगे हम उड़ाएंगे हम Then Boris Johnson came and he saw this building and he said uh, so where did you get the money from I said to him no it's uh, all from the funding of the poor people of this community and he was completely shocked the whole jamaat is bonded to khilafat we do things because of khilafat and when khilafat ul masih appeals to the people they open their hearts and it is overwhelming sometime to see people who have very little how generous they are and this is the story of all our mosques you ke jamaat ka mansooba hai isliye umumi taur par to jaisa ki maine kaha यू के एमतियों का ही काम है जमात का ही काम है इसमें हिस्सा लेना चाहिए और बाहर की दुनिया के भी मुखैर अब आप जो हैं उसमें हिस्सा लें जहरी तनजीमों को भी जहरी तनजीमों की हैसीत से जमातों को भी जमातों की हैसीत से बड़ी बड़ी जमातें जो हैं हिस्सा लेना चाहिए क्योंकि सारा साल ही अब तो यहाँ बाहर से मेहमान आते हैं और यू के जमात हर महीने इनकी मेहमान नवाजी भी करती है This mosque is a shining example of the power of community and the strength of unity. It was made possible by the selfless donations of Jamaat members who sacrificed their time, effort, and resources. You do business with Allah, and Allah will bless you so many different ways that you you can't even think about. one person came i knew he'd been collecting money for a long time to buy a house he said khalif al masih has asked his half of the money that i'd collected for the house and i said you've got four children you know you how are you going to manage he said allah will help me now 6 months later we needed another half a million that person came and gave me another check and i said to him excuse me what happened he said i've got the house and I've still got money to give to you. I didn't ask him why how or anything. But this is Allah helping those who give in his way. And this is the key that when you do business with Allah, he will never shortchange you. He will give you many times more. So another story I was once sitting in a somebody's house and I mentioned about this person who had given half the money for his house. So there was a young man sitting there. I won't give his name, and he said, "Yes, I was there on that night when when this uh, appeal was made." And he said that I had been trying to buy a house in a particular street, and he said that every time I went to put a deposit down, I was gazumped. Gazumping is where somebody comes and gives more money and takes the house away. And he said that uh, that night I decided that I was going to give a substantial amount for the mosque. and he said the next very next week the same street a bigger house came i gave less offer and i've got the house so allah immediately told him that i have accepted your sacrifice that you made and you can hear these stories again and again again and again we are a very small jamaat we're not a very large jamaat you know here including children everything with just over 30000 people yes but by the grace of allah through the blessings of khilafat what we are able to achieve even this is done with the love of people for khilafat and the love can be seen here in every uh, space of this building and allah's blessings can be seen in, uh, in this building completely and that is uh, the magic of khilafat phir is ke minar par se duniya ko haq ki janib bulayenge hum
कला मेरा रही मो रहे बबांग बाला सुनाएंगे हम